Welcome back, everyone. One of the great advantages of iPad drawing for designers is the speed with which you can make what I call a hybrid rendering over a photograph of an existing room or even an image taken from Google Street View. So if you can spare just a few minutes, I'll show you all the techniques involved in turning this photograph of an existing room into this rendering of a proposed design with tricks you won't want to miss for making a lighting study towards the end of the video. Ready? To follow along with this exercise, download all the images I use at the link in the description below, then add the images to your iCloud Drive so you can access them from your iPad. Next, we'll open Procreate on our iPad, tap Photos, and import the photo we need from our Photos Library. The next step, as we so often do in these tutorials, is add a layer for what I call tracing paper, selecting white dropping it on top of the layer, and then reducing the opacity to give you the density of tracing paper you like. Then I'll add a new layer above that, switch to the technical pen and some red ink, and trace in freehand the parallel lines that are converging back to the vanishing point. Notice that I'm using the quick line feature in Procreate to hold the tip of the pencil down at the end of the stroke and make sure it's aligning with the edges I want. Once I've created this diagram, I can go to the Actions menu, click on Edit Drawing Guide, and find the Perspective Drawing Assist Guide. Then locate those vanishing points by aligning the little guidelines, here shown in black, with the red lines that I've drawn. Just moving that dot around by holding the tip of the pencil down until I get the alignment that I need. Then I just go over to the second vanishing point, do the same thing, again adjusting the guidelines as needed to make the color more visible. Then tap and hold down on that point to get the alignment along the red lines that I diagrammed earlier. Now that I've found the vanishing points, I can start adding the F, F, and E that I've collected in my iCloud Drive. So I'll go to the Actions menu, the Add button, and insert a file. And in this case, I find my UCLA Week 4 assignment. I open that folder, and I begin adding pieces, starting with the fireplace that our new client would like to place along the wall on the left side. Now the fireplace comes in, and I need to trim it. So I'm going to go to the Selection menu in Freehand Mode, and I'm going to place dots at the corners of the image that I want to keep, tracking them around, zooming in and out with two fingers as needed. You'll notice I can switch to freehand curves, but I can also go back to just selecting dots at the long end of the image. And once it's completed in my Marching Ant show, I copy it and paste it, and it ends up on its own layer. Now I can delete the original layer I imported, and using the arrow menu, or the transform menu, in free form mode, I can begin to adjust the corners of that fireplace so they fit into the perspective diagram that I've created. That looks pretty good. And now I'll just go on adding more of my FF and E images, starting with the, let's try this red chair. That'll make a big impact early. Now this is another kind of selection you'll need to make. So I go to the automatic selection option in this case. I tap it and it automatically selects the background, allowing me to drag left or right with the tip of the pencil while holding it down to select more or less of that background. Now I do a three finger swipe and cut, and that's a pretty good job. And that's why we always try to find images on the internet that have white backgrounds or even transparent backgrounds. Now I've also been looking for images that I knew could roughly fit the perspective that I've set up or the perspective of the existing photograph. So I have a minimum of adjustment necessary, but there are cases, like in the case of this side table, where it just doesn't quite fit. So I'll come back to that in a moment. Meanwhile, I'll finish up with some lamps and um, 
go ahead add back in the chairs a nice wood coffee table that'll warm the room up and give the clients that more casual effect they're looking for and it'll go especially well with the books we're going to add in just a moment or two and you can see these selections aren't perfect but the selection tool actually learns what you want to select after a while and it gets better with time now I'm starting to have a small traffic jam of my imported objects here so I'm going to go back into the layers menu and with that top layer highlighted I'm going to show you how to make a group out of these so I'll swipe left to right on all of the images I want to include in a group then tap the group button and there they are assembled into that group it's a single place where I can turn that checkbox on or off I'll label it so I don't forget where it is but by tapping that checkbox on or off I can make them all go away and I can be far less distracted and keep going so let's add the bookshelves next and this is really the piece, piece de resistance for this couple that wants to warm up this rather minimal original room and they also want to add these organic touches so I'll add this rug you can see me selecting the tiny white border that came with that internet image and now I have all of my selections I'm gonna start figuring out what I need to alter in the base photograph itself so in order for this hybrid rendering to be convincing I'm gonna actually alter the photograph I'm gonna add a new layer and first just do a rough draft of what I think I or what I know I need to change I need to extend that wall to the left I'm gonna get rid of that painting that sculpture I'll get rid of this sofa in the foreground get rid of those coffee tables that are blocking that other sofa which they're going to keep and now I've got a sense going back to the original photo with that new red line diagram I've got a sense of where I'm gonna to have to do my patching it's almost like a art history patching where they restore a painting so the first step in our patching is to add a new layer above the photo and that's the layer we're gonna make all of our changes on and with that layer ready I'm gonna go back up to the selection menu tap the S yes. I'm going to freehand and I am going to select the rectangle the perspectival rectangle that I'm going to turn into one single surface and I select the soft brush I use the color sampler the eyedropper to pick up the color I need I adjust the size of the brush and because I'm on a new layer now I just brush in that color uniformly I can actually get almost photorealistic about this and pick up these different subtle variations in the wall with that eyedropper and then sort of airbrush those in I forgot to airbrush out the painting let me do that and then I'm gonna pick up that darker color again and I'll smooth out that where the painting disappeared so you really barely know that anything ever happened on that wall now I'll make a new layer and I'll call it the foreground and I'll do the same with a patch that's going to go over both the sofa and these coffee tables and this is a little more challenging because you'll see in a moment that um, it doesn't really blend in but I just want to start with a a base layer that I can then work with part of the challenge here is going to be to isolate this sofa and I'm going to go ahead and do that I try to minimize the work involved here but I'm going to go ahead and carefully isolate this with a freehand selection tool then I'll cut and paste or copy and paste onto its new layer and now I can just work with that sofa using the same eyedropper method I can select the local color I want to keep and I can just again on a new layer scrub right over the parts of the coffee tables that are still showing on that sofa I can smooth things out I can make it look almost photographic and I can also go back to the original selection invert that use a three finger swipe and get rid of the part where I went outside the lines on my new layer called the sofa patch and there I made it a bit more 
transparent so you can see what's back there. And I'm also going to add these joints that I have obliterated, or rather that were lost when we took out the coffee tables. So I'll just use, a, in this case, I'm using the calligraphy brush. And it has a kind of a loose feeling to it that looks like the original photograph. Now I'm going to go in and make sure I'm on the layer below the sofa. And I will even that layer out a bit so the sofa now stands out. And, you know, to make this sofa stand out, I think I'm going to drag and drop this red into it. You've seen me do that many times. Just make sure you have the sofa layer selected. And then drag and drop the color onto it. And one of the great advantages of Procreate is that once you have placed a color, you can always come back with the adjustments menu and use hue, saturation, and brightness to change that color. And this sofa color will change several times before we're through, so don't worry about that. Now I have this wall, last wall behind the sofa. It's got that artwork on it, so I want to do the same select and fill technique there. That wall is behind the sofa, so I can safely extend my marching ants past it. I'll soft brush that color in and we are all set. Next step is patching the ceiling. You can tell the photograph looks like an empty basement space somewhere. So um, let's uh, reduce the way this ceiling sort of stands out as a sore thumb and let's do the same select and fill on a new layer to the ceiling. We'll get rid of that um, variation that occurred in the original photograph. Smooth it out and I'll bring some of that variation back. I'll select a slightly darker color and create a bit of a gradation across that. So it's back to the FF and E now. We're going to go ahead and bring that fireplace out of that group that has been turned off. That fireplace, uh, we had located that before. So that's still close to the location I want. I want to make sure it doesn't burn the arm of that sofa. So I might adjust a little bit. I might play with the size. It's all fantasy at this point anyway. It's just design. And I'm just trying to get my client excited. So I'll put that there. And it's really all just feeling what would feel good in that room. Oh, one thing that's important is that these things can still be adjusted. I'm using the freeform adjustment mode now to make sure the top of that mantle conforms to the perspective diagram that we set up earlier. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go add the coffee table now. I just bring them up out of that group onto a, onto a place above the group. That was adjusted before. That's still pretty good. I'll check. I can always go back into that drafted perspective layer and quickly sketch some new perspective lines to help me adjust these different pieces of F, F, and E to the proper perspective. I can bring in the lamp now. And this will all go pretty fast. If it's okay with you guys, I'll speed this up. That sofa was down below. Now I'll add it to the top of the stack. And notice, here's a good example. It covered up the coffee table, so I have to take the coffee table back up over the sofa. And there's a lot of playing chess or playing checkers involved in this whole process. Sometimes you have to pause and scratch your head for a while, try and figure out what is what. But here's my lamp behind the sofa, so I can safely position that now. That looks pretty good. Yeah, you can't really ever tweak these things enough. Now let's go back to the egg chair. Pull that up from the layers. Pop it in. How's that looking? Not too bad. I'll activate freeform transformation tool again. And you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna obsess a little bit over that base. I'm gonna Go back to my perspective diagram layer and draw what I think would be a square on the floor under that egg chair. And you can see that the leg is a little off. It's looking a little flat. You know, you're never going to get these things perfect when you just find an image on the internet. So I think what I'll do is just take a moment and select the leg of that chair that is projecting closest to us. I'll go back into freehand selection mode. 
I'll just loop right around that chair and then I'll use the let's go with the freeform mode and I'll just pull that down ever so slightly so it fits more into that square that we drew before the square that estimated proper perspective and that looks pretty good so you know I'm gonna go back to that sofa too that too much red in this image and it's just a placeholder color anyway so I'll quickly tweak that sofa color now let's bring up that end table and to my eye that looks way too flat so I'll, I'll do the same thing I'll adjust it to the extent that I can in free form but now here's a trick I love I'm gonna go back in in freehand and I'm going to loop out the top of that table that's all I need three finger swipe cut and paste and now I can adjust just the top so that the top looks like it's in perspective and of course it'll still be added back into that end table in a moment but while I'm at it I'm gonna look at the bottom as well and that needs to be tweaked so I'll grab some portion of it that I know can overlap with the other once I move it around and I'll do the same thing a freeform distortion of the bottom to make a better looking ellipse that's more in perspective I'll even it up the best I can but because it's on a new layer now I can actually go in with the eraser and scrub off the overage and while I'm there I can see there's a whole bunch of vestigial pixelation left over from when we selected automatically selected those objects out of their white background so I'll clean that up on there and you can see very rough pixelation this is not a perfect process we're just going for the overall impression of a rendering and of a room that will hopefully blow the client away so they don't even worry about these small details let's bring in the gray chair again and this chair is my nemesis for sure it was never really in perspective uh, when I found it on the internet it is just a placeholder after all so you can see me I'm trying just about everything I know to make that thing sit sit in proper perspective but also I don't want to cover up things in the drawing so a lot of this has to do with composition I want to keep visual space between the top left of this chair and that end table there and even that ottoman for the red egg chair so I can also play with all these different transform modes I'm I'm tweaking it a little I'm going to warp to try and pull it out into what I think would be the right perspective as I look over it imagine a photograph being taken of this room now I'm going to copy that end table because I already made those adjustments and because it's even more in the foreground I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a rounded elliptical shape to make it look like it's in the proper perspective I'll drag it around try and make the best composition not necessarily the accurate floor plan but the best composition I'll even move that fireplace back over a little bit because that was too much behind that egg chair and now it really will set my sofa arm on fire but again it's just a rendering let's go back to the rug and this should be pretty magical we're gonna stretch this rug using the distort transformation mode we are gonna independently grab the points of this rug and drag them to match our perspective diagram and here again is the power of creating that perspective diagram ahead of time it's the thing that guides us in every addition we make down the road so that looks pretty good stretching that rug into perspective and let's go into the bookshelves this will be a major part of our design we'll use all of our tactics the distort menu will pull the bulk of the bookshelf into the proper perspective also making sure that layer is behind the fireplace that's looking pretty good but there is a problem here you can see at the end in which case my photograph actually returns 
toward the viewer. So I'm going to trim this part off. I'm going to use the rectangular selection tool, come right down that corner, three finger swipe, and pull that off. But now I've got wall to, wall to fill. So I'll go back to the original bookcase layer and stretch it all the way from end to end. Now I know this looks silly. There's all kinds of missing pieces in this bookshelf. So another trick, let's just, in the spirit of down and dirty rendering, let's go to freehand selection mode right within this same layer. And let's select pieces of this bookshelf that can be used to patch other pieces of the shelf. This one right in the middle is pretty clean. I'll copy and paste that onto its own new layer and you can see that here. And now this gives me the flexibility I need to take it anywhere else on the image and stretch it into perspective in that area. And that looks, well it doesn't look great I know, but again these these things have a cumulative gestalt effect that most clients don't notice. They're just excited about your proposal and they're not going to nitpick your details of your rendering technique. So here's a good chunk of that that can replace this whole day bed in the original and I'll stretch that into place. There's a lot of head scratching as we talked about where you wonder is this the right place for it? But again, this distort tool is fantastic. I can grab these points independently and pull that fragment of that image into perspective. And that's not too bad. Good enough for government work, as they say. So I'm going to move on. But before I move on, let me just patch that last little bit and then nobody can ever complain. Now that's a chaotic mess. That bookshelf now consists of four different layers and I don't want those floating around so I'm going to merge them. I tap the layer, I go to merge down in the pop-up menu and now all four pieces of that are in a single layer. So what's left to do? Let's go and add some details to this. We're going to need some lines in this to really pop a few of the features we want to make sure the client notices. Now I'm going to use that quick drawing feature, quick line feature to estimate an ellipse and then you'll notice I hold the pencil tip down and procreate quick draw feature completes the ellipse. I just want to make sure these down lights all read. I'm going to change them. I'm not worried about the fact that they were square before and now they're ellipses. But I want them to show in the final rendering. And that's for a very important reason. I've also somehow lost my sofa joints. I think I accidentally grabbed that joint layer before and submerged it somewhere. So let me quickly replace those. It's very easy with that script type calligraphy pen and just sampling the color from the original sofa. That's not bad. Now the sofa is a little flat over here on the left side so let me show you one of my favorite tricks. In hue saturation brightness in the middle go to the pencil select soft brush come down to the bottom and make it a little darker adjust your soft brush tip and just brush in what procreate is telling you will be darker now it's going to be a strange color at first but then adjust the hue so it matches the original and all of these remain active until you tap out of selection. So that's a wonderful feature for adding details without adding a completely new layer. And now that couch, that sofa, looks a little bit better. I still don't like the color. Here we go again with another round of 
color adjustment. And as I look at this now, maybe the trick is to make that a canvas color almost. Like take the saturation way down, add some brightness. I am not an interior designer, as I've mentioned, but I do want to just have some contrast on that sofa. Now it's going to be time for our lighting study. So I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to select multiply and I'm going to drop a gray violet over the whole rendering. I'll adjust that and I'm going to go back into this gray violet now and remove what part of the image I want to be the brightest and that's this fireplace. So I go into freehand selection mode I tap around the opening of the fireplace. I extend it out onto the hearth because I want that light to blast out of the fireplace into the room. And I'll start with that small extension. I'll cut that away and you can see the dramatic difference already. I, I can change this opacity a little bit. I could change the hue of this gray violet to it. It's a little too warm, a little too violet, but I can play with that effect I'm going after and I just want to get it ready for the next steps which is to take the soft eraser and to begin adding glow to actually use it to completely erase things like the hi-hat lighting in the ceiling but now I can adjust the brush so I can make make it look like those hi-hats are washing down over the books and I can begin to add glow to different surfaces. Now here I think is a good place for that complete selection. So I'm going to go back to the sofa layer, select it in its entirety. Now I'm going to go back to the twilight layer and I'll use the eraser again and that selection will constrain my erasures to just the area of the sofa. So this is a very convincing way, as you'll see in a moment, when I turn off the marching ants, this is a great way to really make one of these, one of these fabrications that you've created during this tutorial, to turn that into a much more convincing, holistic photograph. Look at that pillow closest to that floor lamp. Let's try the thing. Let's try the same thing with some of these other surfaces. I'm not selecting these ahead of time. I'm just now freehand lightening some of these surfaces. And I'm remember, I'm erasing all of this from that twilight layer. So where light would bounce around and make the room glow, I want to be sure I create some version of that. And there's no perfect way to do this. This really is... I guess it's one of the most fun things I do in Procreate, but it's also fun to just think about how light works and where you want the room to glow and all this kind of thing. So let's even make this lighter. Let's really pump up the contrast between this sofa and that back area. And again, I've selected the sofa ahead of time, so the marching ants are keeping my erasures onto that sofa. And it's looking pretty good. Now, the last step, again, for people that follow my tutorials, you know I love drop shadows. I think they make everything come alive. So I'm going to add a layer just above the rug. I'm going to rename it Floor Shadows. And I'm going to make sure it's in Multiply Mode, and you'll remember why in a moment. I want the detail underneath this addition to still show. So I go into selection in freehand mode. I select the shape. It's pretty much the shape of that coffee table as if it was dropped to the ground. It's got this little hourglass shape to it. I select that. I grab my gray violet and I pull it down and it multiplies itself over that carpet. Now that's a little sharp, a little too sharp and fake looking, so I go now into Gaussian Blur in the Adjustments menu and I slide the 
hold down the pencil tip, slide it left and right, and that creates that beautiful blur. Really starts to look like a photograph. Let's make some final adjustments for this. We'll add a wall wash here. I can put a painting in there. I didn't really find a good one ahead of time, but let me just throw in the first thing I find. Just to make the point, here's a poster for an upcoming art show. I adjust that, as you recall, in one of the adjustment modes. And there is our rendering. Now I'll go back to that bottom layer and hold down on the checkbox and you can see the before. And I'll hold down again and there's the after. And then in JPEG version, here's the nighttime lighting study and here's the daytime version of that same rendering. Thank you for watching today and for more draw along videos like this, check out the video you see on your screen right now or check out my main channel page to get all kinds of playlists and information. Thanks.